things that makes me incredibly bullish on Tesla for the long term is their humanoid bot that they're working on, Optimus. It's been a while since I've shared my thoughts on Optimus, so I wanted to sit down today and discuss what I'm thinking about this because we've had quite a lot of new information since the previous video I've made, a lot of new insights, and there's a lot to talk about. Firstly, I am still expecting, if not even more so now, that if executed as expected, Optimus has the potential to add more value to Tesla stock than any product or service that we've seen before. Actually, it has the potential to add more value to Tesla stock than any stock we've seen before. We've heard different analysts, for example, Kathy Wood at ARK Invest or Ron Barron at the Barron Fund and others, talk about how the robo-taxi platform could dramatically increase Tesla's market cap. And ARK are even thinking potentially $3,100 per share by 2029, with pretty much all that value coming from the robo-taxi. But I, I agree with this. I agree that it's going to do dramatic things for Tesla's market cap. But I really think, in my opinion, that the bot could be much, much, much larger. And why is this? Well, firstly, it will change the labor market. We will have robots that are like humans in terms of their cognitive and physical ability. Optimus is actually getting new hands and it will have 22 degrees of freedom. For reference, human hands have 27. Optimus will be able to automate tasks that humans do now across a wide range of different skill sets from working on manufacturing lines, but also to things like ironing and doing laundry. And with these new hands, it will allow them to do intricate, high precision tasks. This is one reason. There will be a vast range of applications, meaning the total addressable market for a humanoid robot like Optimus is huge. Maybe the biggest market there has ever been before. Think about it. And a lot of people argue that this means that people are going to be displaced from jobs. I think it's going to create more jobs. Short term, maybe there will be some um, removal of humans from certain jobs, jobs that are particularly dangerous, particularly boring, uh, things like that. But it will free people up to actually focus on other things. It will simply lead to a shift in the type of jobs that are available for humans to do. We know from the past that new technological shifts in society often do create new jobs and new ways of life, and we can't always predict that ahead of time. Also, the widespread adoption of Optimus will completely change how businesses, how enterprises operate. Companies may actually choose to invest into humanoid robots rather than hiring additional human workers, which then could lead to a decrease in labor costs and an increase in productivity. So it is beneficial for them to do so. Now, there is always a general concern that we see from the population when any new technology is introduced or any sort of innovative shift or innovative product. People worry that the take rate will be super low. You know, no way are people going to get on board with a humanoid robot or accept it. But you know, we've, we've been in this position time and time again in history. Think about, like, I keep using this example, think about when we switched from horse and cart to vehicles. Like, that wasn't a welcomed change necessarily, but now look at the way society lives. People don't always like change. And you hear it about autonomous driving as well, you know, a robo-taxi platform, but we're also hearing it about humanoid bots. People saying that, you know, they'll never use one, they're going to be creepy, they don't want them in their homes, they're going to kick out loads of people from the workforce, etc., etc. But one thing that I would say is that Tesla's been very smart about this. They've not made Optimus to look super creepy. They've actually made Optimus not to look like a monster, but instead to mimic the human form, hence humanoid robot. But Optimus will be performing tasks way more efficiently and way more cost effective than existing solutions. So this will help drive mass adoption across society. Think about it. We as a population, we love, 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 love convenience. When something comes along that makes our life easier, that can help us, you know, put our focus on other things that we actually like doing, we will adopt that. We love it as a population. Then on top of this, you have to factor in not only the market available for a humanoid robot, but how many of these units will actually be sold. What the demand could be. And Elon Musk has predicted that it could eventually reach 1 billion units per year. And he thinks Tesla will capture at least 10% of the market. In my opinion, they will capture way more. 10% is too low. We'll run some numbers in just a minute, but think about 1 billion units per year. Even 10% of that let's be conservative here, is 100 million units. 100 million multiplied by any margin of profit will give you a very large number. Elon's actually said many times that he thinks the ratio between bots and humans could be at least one to one, but if not more, you know, one to two, maybe three to one in terms of more bots than humans. And this seems wild. Three times the amount of bots on this earth than humans. 
But when you actually start to break this down and you think about how many bots factories will want, how many bots will be um, owned by businesses, how many bots will be in homes, it starts to make sense. Elon even commented recently in an agreement to a post that said Optimus could help the US to get out of national debt. Optimus could potentially increase productivity and efficiency across a variety of industries. That then leads to economic growth and increased tax revenue for the government. We will talk about the numbers associated with Optimus in just a minute and I'll run through some different scenarios that Tesla could actually take some different approaches and you'll quickly see that even when you just do some napkin maths it gets insane very quickly. But right now if someone asked me what do you think the most undervalued stock in the market is I honestly think my answer would be Tesla. The stock has been trading sideways for quite a long time. It's definitely not been doing anything crazy, but all whilst it's been trading sideways, the intrinsic value of the company has been doing some of the most innovative work and is getting more and more valuable as time goes on. So this makes little sense. You can also see a similar thing here. Now this is a platform called Forecaster and they have this feature called Rankings. And this basically can tell you what the most undervalued or overvalued stock are across different indices and you can see many different um, indices on offer here but let's just click into the S&P 500. So they actually use three different methods of valuation. They use discounted cash flow, the Peter Lynch method and economic value added. So they combine all of them and then they take an average to get their average fair price. You can see right now the whole index is undervalued by 3.84%, meaning the S&P 500 is 3.84% below the fair value. But let's just scroll down here and look at the actual individual stocks within the index. So you can see you can filter across different metrics here, but what we're interested in is this fair value column because that's gonna tell us which is the most undervalued stock. So let's filter on that column. So what you can see is that Tesla has actually come up as the most undervalued position in the whole S&P 500 index. And currently it is 430% below the fair price. Now, if we actually click into Tesla, we'll get way more information about the company you can, you know, we can see pretty much everything that you want to see about any stock. But what I'm interested in is this here. So what we can see actually, firstly, is the average fair value is telling us based on those um, calculations, what the fair value of Tesla stock is right now. And the current price of 197.42 is 430% below the fair value of over $1,000 per share. But look here, you can see the variance between the average fair value and the stock price over time. And actually what you start to see is that there's often quite a big difference between those two. We can also see down here how their revenue is actually split up. And I think this is going to dramatically dramatically, dramatically change over time. There are many other things that you could look at uh, on Forecaster. You know, they don't just have the basics. They have lots of functionality that is very interesting. The seasonality of the stock, uh, the overview tab, literally everything that you could possibly want inside a selling and so on. If you do want to take a look at the Forecaster platform, then do use my link in the description below. That link will actually get you a seven day free trial and 10% off when you use the code Haley 10 And let me know in the comments if you do give this platform a go and what you think. So let's think about Optimus a little bit deeper in terms of the money it could bring in. Elon said that if they get a 10% market share, they could be bringing in $1 trillion in profit per year from the bots. That's not including the robo taxi platform. That's not including EV sales. That's not including energy. That's not including services or anything else. But of course we have to ask, how much will a bot actually cost? Well, the important thing to realize here is that they will probably be quite costly at first, but then they will reduce in price over time, like everything does. So maybe they'll start at 25,000 to 30,000 per unit, and then they'll move to 20,000. And then eventually I think Elon said about 10,000 per bot when they're at high scale. So let's say that Tesla take 10% of a market that is 1 billion units per year, and that gives us 100 million bots a year. And it will cost Tesla way less to make a bot than it does to make an EV, as Elon has said many times before. If they then go on to sell a bot at 20,000 and it costs them 10,000 to make, that is $10,000 in profit. So then if we do 100 million units multiplied by 10,000 per unit, that is an annual profit of one trillion dollars. Now this won't be clear cut of course, there will be expenses of sorts involved, but you can start to see how then if you multiply this by a PE ratio of 20 or 25 or 30, you quickly get to a very big valuation. But like I said, I don't think Tesla will have 10% market share. I think it will be a lot bigger. So then if we say that their market share will be 20% instead of 10, then your profit will be 2 trillion a year. But 
Here's where it gets interesting. Will Tesla just be selling a bot for $10,000 at high scale and that will be it? I don't think so. For example, I think they will run a sort of app store with these bots, but we'll get into that in just a minute. And so far, we've only actually considered Tesla selling these bots, you know, like a one-off sale, like you'd buy an iPhone or something. But actually, they have two options. They can sell them and or they can lease them. And Elon's already confirmed that they will do both but leasing will come first. And obviously leasing out a bot versus a one-off sale is a completely different revenue model. They then, instead of being a product, become a service. Tesla actually own the bot and then they rent it out to customers, to businesses for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year, however long the time period, and they charge for doing that, they collect the revenue and then they do that over and over again with the same bot and the revenue keeps on coming in. And of course, there are many large pros and cons to both approaches, hence why they're probably doing them both eventually. But with leasing, um, Tesla can keep a closer eye on how the bots are actually being utilized, which I think in the early days of having a humanoid bot is actually quite important. And also not everybody can afford to purchase a humanoid robot, nor is everyone gonna need one and see it as a cost-effective solution to have one every single day. So actually by offering them as a service, people that maybe wouldn't have purchased them before are now gonna be able to actually get one, which means that the total addressable market is even larger. Remember as well that this can go one step deeper. You can have short-term leasing, long-term leasing, and then you can also have business leasing, which could be a little bit different as well. So how much could Tesla actually look to rent a bot out for? Well, I think what they are going to try to do is make them cheaper than human labor. Now, I don't live in the US, but apparently according to Google, the minimum wage is currently sitting at about $7.25. So whatever that minimum wage is for human labor at the time that the bots get released, I think Tesla will charge less than. So let's just say that the bot would be $4 an hour. If someone then leases it out, rents it out for 12 hours, that is $48. And depending on how much it actually costs at the time to manufacture a bot, if we say it costs them 20,000, which eventually it will cost them, you know, 10, so it'll be lower than that. But you would need that bot to be leased out for 5,000 hours before you've made your money back on the manufacturing. And you know, after this, it's pretty much 100% profit for Tesla. Unless Tesla need to spend money in terms of repairs or charging or things like that. But even so, I don't think that will eat into the profits too much. So if you have 1 million bots all being rented out for about $4 an hour, then how much can this bring Tesla? Well, we have to ask ourselves, how many hours a week could a bot potentially be doing useful work? A lot more than humans can, and that's for sure. Bots don't require work breaks, they don't require vacations, they don't require any benefits, any pensions. They can work in all types of environments, even ones that are hazardous to humans. They don't need to chat to their colleagues. They're not going to be demanding mental health leave or anything like that. They're not going to be needing any management review, any real training. They're not going to be um, taking part in any sort of fraud, any theft of the company. You can quickly see how much easier it is for a business to have a bot versus a human. So in my opinion, Optimus will be able to work for at least eight hours solidly, for sure, with full productivity, no breaks or anything like that. Now, I'm sure Optimus will actually be able to work for a lot longer than eight hours on one charge. So I'm, I'm speaking here, how long can Optimus work for full productivity without having to recharge it? I'm saying at least eight hours, if not more, but it's gonna depend on what sort of work it's doing, how much battery energy is going to be required. For lower energy tasks, it can last longer. For higher energy tasks, it will last uh, lesser time before it needs recharging. Those exact amount of hours are unknown to me right now, but all we need to, all we need to think about is it, they are gonna be more efficient at working than humans are without a doubt. Then comes the question of how they will actually recharge. Will they just take themselves off to a wireless charger and go and stand quietly in the corner of the room and stand on a pad and just recharge? Or will they actually need to be plugged in? Will the owner of the bot have to take the uh, take Optimus and go and plug it in to recharge? Or will there be some element of swapping the batteries out? I don't know. I'm thinking it makes most sense to have a wireless charger, but we'll see how things unfold. So anyway, let's get back to the maths and let's be conservative here. Let's say a bot works for 364 days of a year. I'm gonna give it one day in case it needs any maintenance or repairs. And it works for 16 hours a day. That is 5,824 hours of work a year, which then equates to $23,296 per year. So it's already made more than it costs to make it within the first six months. 
And like I said, this will pretty much be all profit because it's software as a service SaaS, uh, model and it will have very high margins. And then you multiply that figure by how many bots are being rented and yep, you start to see how this is crazy. But obviously, please remember this is long term. This is not what's going to happen in six months time. So now we have both money from one off sales, which is crazy. And we have money from renting them out, which is crazy. And you can quickly see that firstly, how possible this is in terms of how good the adoption rate is expected to be because of how useful and how efficient bots will be. And then you also start to understand how possible it is that Tesla's market cap could become at least 10x times the current most valuable company in the world. And that's just with Optimus. Then you add in robo taxi, EV sales, energy, services, and anything else that pops up in the future. But it's not over there. This video must continue because this is sophisticated technology. We will also have updates to these bots and we will have different abilities for them to carry out. Not every business, not every person that has a bot in the future will require that bot to be able to do the same things, to have the same functionalities. So then you start to introduce this idea of an online store. Think of it like an app store where you can go on and you can upgrade your bot or you can you know, download different skill sets to it. How much will they charge to download the skill of your bot being able to garden? Will it be X amount of money as a one-off payment or will it be X amount of money ongoing every single month, uh, reoccurring revenue until that customer doesn't want that skill set anymore and then they stop paying that monthly fee. Now, I'm assuming that the bots will come with standard functionality. They will come out of the box with a standard skill set that everyone has, but then if you want special capabilities, specialized skills, you will have to buy them. Just like with the iPhone. The iPhone doesn't come with everything on the app store. Sometimes you have to go on and download things and sometimes those things cost money. They could also do a monthly subscription where a customer pays a certain amount of money uh, each month and then that person gets access to any updates, any required skills, any um, over-the-air software updates that we see happen with the EVs, enhanced performance, um, maybe compatibility with the rest of the Tesla eco ecosystem. I don't know, things like that. Think of it like the monthly FSD income that Tesla gets, but this time for the bot. I'm also thinking that it's possible that Tesla actually make an advertising revenue from Optimus. You know, you could put them in different shopping centers and different stores. They could greet customers, they could answer questions, they could upsell different items, they could even suggest items based on different customer preferences. And all of this could actually help drive sales. And obviously alongside that, the business would be saving money because not only are they driving sales, but they're saving money on what they would pay human workers. I know this becomes quite an issue uh, for me anyway, because I start to think, do I want to live in a world where I'm going to a store, if we're even going to stores? Oh my God, we'll just be doing everything online. But going to a store and there's just humanoid bots instead of humans. Do I want to live in a world like that? Do I want my future kids to live in a world like that? Probably not. But anyway, let, let's park my, uh, my thoughts on that right here. You could also have Optimus actually like wearing digital screens to advertise particular services, particular products, you know, um, eye-catching marketing campaigns that they're physically wearing and walking around different shopping centers. You could also, you definitely, definitely could get them involved in social media marketing. I am so, so certain that brands would jump on the chance to use Optimus in their social media campaigns for their products. Just like brands and celebrities are jumping on the cyber truck because it's going to be so novel. They will get a lot of eyes to their campaign if they have Optimus. But that's just the thought anyway. Let's move on to whether or not there will be any competition. And is there any competition now? Well, I don't actually think there's very much. There are other companies working on developing humanoid bots. And I think some of them will do extremely well. But what Tesla is trying to do is a little bit different. They are trying to go for a mass adopted humanoid bot mass adopted across society. Let me explain why I think they won't have much competition here. Number one, their pace of innovation. What Tesla has been able to achieve with Optimus in a very short space of time is very impressive. Are other companies going to be able to outpace Tesla's innovation? Do other companies have enough money to do that? Do they have the right talent to do that? Do they have the right resources at their companies to be able to match Tesla on this? 
I don't think so. Number two, the training and data collected. Tesla have already spent many, many years collecting real world data to train their FSD neural networks. And this data can then be used to provide a valuable foundation for developing for training Optimus, helping it to recognize objects, predicting behavior, making decisions, etc. Optimus learns from FSD. Number three, Tesla have a reputation. When we're speaking about humanoid bots, not everyone is going to want a bot from particular companies. They are going to want companies that are driving AI in the right ways. They are going to want companies that may not use them for negative things. And you know, Tesla have a reputation and also they are leaders of both software and hardware. And number four, which is perhaps the most important one for this is the ability to scale. Tesla have something that not many companies have. They have high volume manufacturing experience and economies of scale in producing EVs. And this can be applied to any of their other products, including the bots. And bots will actually be easier for Tesla to manufacture than their EVs are. So they're only going to be even better in this area. And I think if I remember correctly, the bots will have way less moving parts than the EVs do, which means easier, but also reduces costs. So things are looking, in my opinion, to be incredibly interesting, incredibly optimistic, and I am incredibly bullish. But where are we sitting right now? Because, you know, we're talking about the robo taxi platform at the moment quite a lot because it's upcoming. It's going to be here relatively soon. But the bot seems to be this thing right out in the distance that no one can quite grab hold of and grasp yet. But actually, when you break it down, we are making very good progress. We already know that Tesla have a couple of their bots working in their factories right now. And this will only expand over time. Two bots will quickly become 10 bots, will quickly become 100, will quickly become 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. You know, it, it's going to expand very rapidly. And then you get to the stage where not only are the bots working in Tesla factories, they're working in other factories, they're building themselves bots building bots. Elon saw this estimation of Optimus production ramp 2024, 1000, 2025, 10,000, and so on, all the way down to 2030. And he said, not quite that fast, but not far wrong. We are not seeing 1 million bots in the workplace, nor in the homes anytime soon. Not in the next few years, probably not even by the end of the decade. But long term, this is very interesting. This really, really could completely change Tesla, Tesla market cap, Tesla stock, everything to a whole different level. Like robo taxi is going to be one thing. The bot is going to be the next step, the next level. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make a follow-up video. If you have anything to add, again, leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, if you do want to try the Forecaster platform, which I do recommend, I think it's a fantastic platform, use my link in the description below along with the code Haley 10 which is on the screen now, and you can get 10% off. And remember, there's a seven-day free trial too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, for supporting the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.